welcome back to Twitch Plays D and D. Yeah. I'm your dungeon master, Sobi, and we are live with episode three of Curse of Strahd. Joining us today, we have Alex playing as Delphini the Barbarian. Hey guys, welcome back. Victor playing as Clement the Cleric. Yes, playing indeed. Stomach is rumbling. I can hear it. Marky playing as Cheek the Druid. <laughs> Hello, it's very early in the morning here. Good and morning. <laughs> And we have Jordan playing as Roland the Sorcerer, the chat-controlled player. Fantastic to be here as always. Thank you, thank you. And then you'll see a little bit of them later on. We have the lovely Alpha Whale and Griff voicing some of our NPCs. Hi, I'm so glad, I'm so glad to be here. Awesome. As usual, we have just a few updates. First, we have an amazing new overlay to show off. So, ooh, <laughs> ah. Ooh, ooh ah. Nice. Ooh, Let ah. me just grab that ocean bottle there. Oh, 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 oh delicious. Oh, that's great. What do you think, chat? So good. I forgot to attack Delphini last time and everyone voted. Oh. So Delphini, while you and the party stand in this dark, dank earthen room, a swarm of ash covered rats dart from one corner to another, crawling into small holes in the wall. One runs over your feet and takes a gnarly bite out of your ankle with a and he looks up at you and, and he goes and he points at his finger his eyes and looks at you and he says <laughs> that's for my friend that you smashed in that trunk you asshole and he runs away and you take one point of damage Fine. <laughs> i guess i earned that <laughs> and that brings us to our opening, opening poll, poll. <laughs> Which item would you like the boss to be holding? Your options are a baby rattle, a wine glass, an arcane puzzle box, or, of course, a smelly fish. And you guys can just type directly into chat to vote. I feel like there's a clear choice here. Is yeah. It the smelly uh fish? It is, in I, fact, the smelly fish. You know, this. <laughs> Thank you so much for voting. The smelly fish is going to make a lovely appearance today. <laughs> Perfect. I'm so excited. And with that, who's ready to play some D&D? Yeah. All right. Zoom. Last time, you agreed to help two innocent children fight a monster in their home. But when you entered, you were surprised to see a dilapidated mansion filled with cobwebs, a haze of dust, and to Clement's great sorrow rotted food. On the second floor, you charged into multiple rooms at once, finding a small, emaciated pug named Poggers, who might be a demon, a ghostly nurse nursemaid who had been cruelly tortured, and the remains of Rose and Thorn, the children you had agreed to help. They came to you once again, but this time in ghostly, ethereal form, telling you the story of how their mother and father went to fight a monster in the basement and never returned. You collected the bones of the nursemaid and the children, allowing them to follow you into the dark dungeons below the bowels of this ramshackle edifice. Clinging to the damp clay walls around you, you entered a room where you found the father's decayed body hanging from the ceiling. In his final hour, he wrote about how his wife had succumbed to madness and formed an atrocious cult. And just then, you felt the ground tremble beneath your feet. Boom, boom, as a shadowy figure emerged from a narrow hallway. It was Mrs. Durst, the lady of the house and the sole survivor of this cursed family. She urged you to either leave or continue on to learn more about baby Walter. But you had enough of her games, and with weapons drawn and spells ablaze, you prepared to attack. And here we are. With our first combat, everyone! Oh, yes! Woo! So you see Lady Durst, and again, she's dressed in these ragged, torn dress, and her face is covered in thick scars and grotesque mutations. A red glow burns from her eyes, and you hear she gives this, this sort of deep, guttural scream. You hear, ah! I shall kill you all! Wait, 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 ah, just, just give, give me a second. And she pulls out this pair of rusty brass spectacles from one of her pockets. 
Um, and one of the lens has a slight crack on it from what you can see, and she gently places it on her head. And... Oh, there's more than you... Uh, more of you than I realized, <laughs> but no matter. I shall kill you all. And she charges towards... Delphini, and with her long bent claw, she swipes a f- at a fiendish speed. And she swipes at you, Delphini, dealing six slashing damage. And the power of this blow surprises you as she swipes down at, at you. Please, Delphini, take that damage and make a strength saving throw to see if you can brace yourself against this attack. Strength I can do. Let's see what we got. And you, with your resolute soundness and your battle stance as you prepared yourself to fight this this fiend, with your feet firmly <laughs> planted as she slashes back, you just merely budge backwards a, a bit to try to get out of her range, but you stand firmly planted a, as, as where you are. And... As she slashes downward, her swing actually hurls, uh, cuts through some of your your clothing on your front, and and her blow swings down with her fist hurled into the ground with this, as a large crack emerges in the in the ground before you, and each of you are shaken. But from that shock, a chunk of clay ceiling comes crashing down from above. Clement, I need you to make a deck saving throw as this large piece comes hurtling down in this dark dungeon. As this happens, this this <laughs> large piece of clay falls down and smashes you on your shoulder and neck as you were also surprised from the power of her blow. Please take 1d4 of damage. Wow. And then Lady Durst darts her, her gaze towards Cheek. Yes, I think I, I would like to attack. Go for it. Act so perfect. You, with this incantation Ooh, on your staff, you <clears throat> smash it with two oh. hands, and you l- and you and you you do get a hit there. Let me roll for damage. Nice. Ooh, eight. Kick out a leg and swing this large staff with two arms harshly, and it hits her right across the face. As oh. you actually see a tooth fall fall out, one of her few teeth that's still in her mouth, as she looks at you and starts craning her neck, and you see the fire glowing in her eyes, and they're, they're ready to strike. Okay, so I'm, I'm ready in case she, it, you know, takes a step towards me, so I'm not going to move out of her space. Okay. Clement? I will uh, say, Volsrevnia Gun, and I will cast a uh, fairy fire on it. Nice. I pull out my glove and my my scars on my my left hand start to glow a bit and um, she is surrounded in a red red light she's burning red and would you mind me just you need to make a deck saving throw now or is that uh, with speed she rolled a, a 13 plus 3 this light emanates around her this harsh red light she turns at it very quickly and steps out of the way here and as you Summon I'll say. this this fairy fire from the, from the ground around her. Um, not only is she averting her gaze from that this bright light here, but she's turned it right towards you, especially as you stepped forward with the, with some of the light still gleaming on one side of you, uh, and her attention is fully on you. And I'll say, I want to eat, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> I'm so hungry. <laughs> Roland and Delphini. I think I'm actually going to activate my one searing smite. With that, I, I step up to this disgusting, fierce creature that's that's going against my party, and I whip out my warhammer and just go straight for the head. Yeah, with easily you step forward nice. um, and almost with a, a fiery passion of revenge from that first swing at you you're ready to deal back some, some considerable damage um, please roll for for damage on that it's a, it is a hit and then plus six for that cool 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 cool, cool. nice 
again seeing being surprised from the power of her blow you're ready just to deal back some some massive weight uh, at, at her direction you swing that large hammer as it hits her side and and she looks at you and says, all of you you just all talk about food and pancakes hey everybody look what i found more pancakes sweet <laughs> <laughs> roland is it your turn I believe it is. First, I would like to uh, uh, hoist myself up onto the bed, and uh, and I yell out to Cheek. I say, Cheek, duck! What? As in, Where? get duck, down. Duck. Duck. Oh, okay. Down, like under the chest. <laughs> so, I go, Kali na sakawa! And, and I throw my hand forward, uh, casting gust of wind uh, directly in front of me at uh, uh, Lady Durst. This is beautiful, so... Into. So Perfect. you jump on the bed and, and you yell out this command, Cheek, I need you to make a dex throw right now to see yep. if you are able to react quick enough to his his <laughs> shouting. And you duck down and this this um, movement of of wind emits forward and it deals one D4, you said? Yes. Four damage to her as <laughs> No, I... She starts coughing um, from from all of this and even kicking it around over here. Pancakes, mushrooms, sandwich. this is enough food! <laughs> and, and also with that, I, w I would like to remind that uh, she also needs to have a strength saving throw or she will be pushed back 15 feet. All right. So she um, coughs uh, from this, but you see she plants her her feet into the ground and you see these cl these claws that as you get a better look at her feet just um right into the the ground which is which is mostly dirt and clay here with a with a few scatterings of, of kind of rocks almost like making a makeshift cobblestone floor um so her feet just dig in as she even braces her head downward as the wind just pushes back at her and she stays in place so, uh, strength saving throw? Yes, please. As this Excellent. gust of wind just shoots in your direction. Such a proficiency in, in strength. Um, you're able to clearly stand your ground. Um, and just as that first swipe that she dealt at you didn't even phase you, this, this wind just feels like a light breeze on the back of your, your neck at this point. Gets up to that table and, and she's kicking off some plates and cups as she does it. And once again, with the same blow that she dealt with, um, with Delphini, slashes down at you um, as, it, as it pierces through some of your chainmail, and you take I will use my warding flare. Almost inhuman reaction, you just put your palm up and this light again as she pierces backwards. And, and as she has to dart her gaze from, from the brightness of this light, she swings and, and misses you entirely um, and, and has to stabler, stabilize herself back on this table. We are back at it with Cheek. I am going to be reckless. I'm going to run up and I'm going to just swing my my staff at her great once 18? again you were able this is a clear hit um you you smacked her hard last time and you've you've gotten a good sense of how she moves and once again with your shillelagh um you just as it hits um the the right side of her as she's standing up on this uh table still shielding her eyes from some of the lights around you see her um her back just bend a little um as she as she grabs for it um in pain from this from this blow to her Clement? i will um cast uh, sacred flame i will say Zvitoplomia, and um my hand just burns a bit the the scars flare up a bit and um I cast sacred flame so she has to make a uh, dex and it glows with a, a, a bright red, red as um uh, as it pierces in, in her eyes, but she's gotten oh too used to your your light tricks here, and and says that won't work this time, and dodges um, out of the way um, of of this attack, uh, and it doesn't. Uh, I'll just say, what do you mean it's enough food? There's never enough food. <laughs> That's it. At this <laughs> point, Roland, you start to hear. <laughs> Drop a sick insult and smack her with your staff 
as these voices start flooding in your mind and you hear a few others say oh no do a sick somersault that would be so cool no no go with the insult yes 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 and you hear all the all the voices all now agreeing yes yes do the insult i say you know what why not a little bit of both and i say this time your death will be permanent you witchy woman. I uh, jump into that gust, preparing my staff, doing a somersault, and then like twisting myself around. Uh, hopefully, with the help of the gust of wind, I will have spun directly in such a way that I could just I could just baseball bat her head right off. Great. Nice. Give me a, a hit roll, and I'm going to be raising the difficulty on this one, um, given that you weren't able to control yourself, but there's still a chance that maybe your your large staff uh, still connects with the target here. And yeah, so you trying to wield and even trying to still fight um, the wind as, you're, as you realize uh, your somersault has, has gone against you, you do land on the ground there and, and you're not able to connect your staff. Uh, feeling the rage into her body, uh, Delphine gets the familiar feeling of the kind of red-hot sparks in her hands and starts to lose control of the magic that she never quite had control over. Let's see, that's 11. Necrotic energy bursts from you. Roll a number of d6s equal to your rage damage. Oh no. Each other creature within 30 feet of you takes necrotic damage equal to that total, and you gain temporary hit points equal to the sum of the necrotic damage dealt to the creatures. I'm so sorry. So, Delphini, you, gripping your warhammer, give this kind of battle cry out as... And this black, purple, necrotic energy just starts surging out of you and gives this small shockwave as it... Roland, you take six damage, six necrotic damage mm-hmm. from this, and sh- and Lady Durst takes six necrotic damage. Cheek mm-hmm. and Clement, both of you are partially obscured right now. Uh, Cheek, you being in the hallway, and Clement mm-hmm. behind Roland. Um, neither of you need to take damage on this. So Delphine, you get twelve temporary hit points from this. And um, immediately, she her gaze just looks deep into your soul, and this shocks you to your core. Um, you even get some flashbacks to some old encounters with, with undead that you've had. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Oh, I can do constitution. <laughs> oh, never mind. Eight. <laughs> oh, oh, oops. Yeah, so Eight you um, you see this and, and you almost get shocked from one, her quick speed in blocking your attack, and then two, and just shrugging it off and gazing just menacingly at you. And you take 12 psychic damages. You get, um, again, these flashbacks uh, of, of prior encounters that you've had. Uh, and you have to shake your head um, um, to, to try to get the sense back back into you there. And Well, those points came and went. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that is back with Cheek. Okay, first I'd like to check on Poggers to make sure that Poggers is okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you pull open your, your bag of holdings and out you just see boop, this cute little pug <laughs> look around uh, and it looks at you and then quickly looks at uh, at the monster that, that you guys are fighting in, in this room and burrows down just kind of with one eye peeking out. Okay, uh, so... Anyway. With that, I'm going to run forward, and I'm going to do my uh, my my swinging attack with my my quarterstaff, my shillelagh quarterstaff. You go to you step up to her and go to swing. As now all of you are just completely surrounding her, up, but she still has the height advantage being on this table and sees your attack coming. And with almost an unnatural contortion of her body, she bends and dodges your attack entirely as it just goes, whoosh, swings through the air uh, above her. Oh, I did not like that. Roland, did you see that? Uh, yeah, um, you know, she she has the higher ground, Anakin. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? What did you tell uh, me? <laughs> Uh, so, sorry, um, that was one of my ancestors. Uh, yeah, no, I don't like this. Um, we we need to end this now. As I step backward, I focus on the scars, and the scars burn brighter, like uh, it's turning orangish. 
Um, and I say, Yasuki Plumini, and I cast Scorching Ray. Second level. Ooh, awesome. Uh, I reach my hand up, and three Scorching Rays emit from from uh, from the scars in my uh, the first part of the forearm. They seem to resemble tiny mouths that will Ooh. bite yeah. with flame. Right, so that's Ooh. eight. So it's three rays. Yeah, yeah. that's 2d6, right? <laughs> yeah. And so the fire and these these mouths, which at first are small, almost like uh, fa fairy trails of fire that shoot out from your hand. And as they approach her, you see these large jaws bearing sharp teeth of fire <sighs> clench um, and, and, and envelop almost her entire body as you just see her light up and scream ah! as, as the flames fly up. Um, um, and you can see her clothes starting to get completely singed on, on one side. Um, at this point, she's looking pretty beat up from, from all of you. Is that an 11? Uh, hurls forward and and um, hits part of the table as well. as Now, the entire lower half of this table now is just burning in flames. And I'm going to make her do a dexterity check. And she is not able to react as as this old wood table just lit up like tinder from from the two scorching rays that you sent by. And the, the flames there, um, although she dodged your attacks, just light up from from where she wasn't even looking as the fire um, burns up. And she takes uh, three fire damage from, from that as well, in addition to your hit. That spell is badass. <laughs> Roland and Delphini. I cast uh, Chill Touch, one uh, d eight necrotic. Yeah, please go ahead and roll the. So rather than uh, a full, a full like extended arm clap, uh, I I uh, bring my hands forward and and grasp together like this, um, <clears throat> as as I go, Fum Kalai. Uh, and I, I send this hand forward, grasping uh, at her legs, just just trying to chill her to the bone. You're able to lean forward and you grab one of her ankles firmly as as all of you start to see and uh, this this light layer of ice um, emanating from your fingers and as it crawls up part of her ankle ankle she sees you immediately and and kicks your hand off as as the the, the spell fades away from from your your hand uh, and you see some of those ice shards just break off uh, from her ankle as she kicks away i want to go for let's say like her right shoulder it would we say that that's closer to me yes okay i'm gonna go i'm just gonna straight up crush it all right oh i didn't roll out with advantage actually give me the second roll because it could always be a critical Roland, you got her attention, and as she kicks you off and looks down at your direction, um, she glances back up, and the next thing she sees is this massive warhammer right at her shoulder. Just go goof, as it um, smashes her there, and let's see uh, some damage on that one. All right, so warhammer, that's base damage, plus two for rage, so that's five plus the ten for both hands. Yeah. And, and that leaves us at eight. Perfect. Almost completely dislocated her shoulder. At, at this point, she shouts, But this may not be the end. And breathing heavily, she clutches her crushed shoulder. And she yells, Skull Crusher! Get in here! And you hear these loud, Goof! Goof! And all of you, your attention is drawn towards the hallway that she came down. And you begin squinting your eyes as you see this enormous figure, a massive, lumbering abomination creeps forward. A horrific creature that's sewn together from different body parts, most likely from the numerous victims that this house has lured in 
over the ages. And he bears this large, toothless grin. And, and you hear, Lady Durst, I just had the best nap I've ever had. You know how my back's been killing me all month. Well, I feel as good as the day my accursed body was first animated. And he gives a little punch in the air. And then you hear as these thick green strands of pulsing demonic light flow from Skull Crusher's eyes and mouth. He gives this ghastly gasp for air and he starts clutching his throat as you see these green energies start leaving his body. He collapses under his own weight as, as dust kicks up. From, from this entire scene. And you see these green lights flow into Lady Durst's fingertips. And you see now her shoulder, which was crushed downward and dislocated and completely bloodied, um, is now in grasping her hands with that green energy. <laughs> Connects back up there. And you see across her body, a couple uh, of, of wounds that you've dealt begin to heal up. Um, her attire and dress is still beat up from, from the fight that you've done here, um, but it looks like she's come back with some extra energy and attacks. I hate her so much. Roland, what the hell is that? Uh, it's something that uh, if we can avoid dealing with, we should avoid dealing with it. Her head quickly turns. Um, having up. been looking in the way of that hallway, she makes her eyes connect with you, Cheek. And at this point, you start hearing uh, voices enter your mind. And you just start hearing this um, cacophony of voices and shouts in your head. And I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Man, poor skull crusher. Oh, nine. You look at her cheek and you feel this intense energy just emanating and filling your mind as the, as the whispers grow greater and greater. You are frightened. You actually can start off by giving me a wisdom saving, wisdom saving throw, and we're gonna do that every turn to see if you can fight off the echoing um, voices in your head. Oh, seven, even less. Roland, you see her, and and you almost get a quick sense of relatability. Cheek, cheek, eyes on me, eyes on me. Look, mm. look at me. Looking at her, but you will roll with disadvantage on. If doing okay. So. Um, I'm gonna try and swing wildly at uh, Miss Lady Durst with my eyes closed. Uh, I kind of just uh, like look to my left, Delphine. If you can, I recommend that you duck. And I'm just gonna start Art. swinging, <laughs> swinging my quarter stuff yeah, wildly. See. Okay, and this one is it. at disadvantage, right? Yes, please. And, and unfortunately, it misses as, uh, as Lady Durst just looks at you and gives a, a cackle. <laughs> no, Pretty cool no. attack, huh? <laughs> I don't like her, Roland. Just get behind us, it's fine. I was gonna go behind, like, Delphine and Roland. I'm gonna do it! <laughs> Alright, so you, out of the way. As you get behind Delphine with her large structure there, but um, you see her tongue lash out and it actually extends further just as you're getting away, as it uh, like almost snaps at you like a whip and it hits the backside of you as you're running and you take three points of damage. I've seen enough hentai to know where this is tongue, going. Tongue damage. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the visual of Cheek trying to hit Mrs. Durst like a pinata. <laughs> yeah. Flailing around, yeah. I will touch him on one of his wounds that is clearly visible. And I will say, slow voice, Selenia, and just run my hands over it and feels like I'm just cauterizing the the wound. Great. Let's um you can you can roll for for that and and roll on you feel um a warmth emanating from Clement's hand 
and and your first immediate thought is this guy's crazy I, our fire is about to shoot out of his hands um but, but very quickly in a, in a second you, f- you feel this incredibly soothing heat as as in the middle of this thick of a battle you give a, just a sigh of relief for the first time of uh, and you feel a, a renewed energy coming at you as and, you heal for and, nine hit points and with that, I, I I reach out my hand to him and I say, thank you, brother. Roland, you, as you make this kick, I will allow you to, to spin around with your staff as well. So you can roll this as a as a quarter staff attack. Um, okay. Cool. Was that an unnatural 20? Uh, unnatural 20. Ooh. Dirty, dirty 20, as people call it. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... that is a dirty 20. And yeah, you, um, this time... Um, what went through your head as you jump on the stool is you crashing into the floor the last time you, you jumped off that bed <laughs> and slid on the ground, but you immediately start to psych yourself into it as you're like, no, I got this. And at that moment you hear, yeah, you can totally do it. And, <laughs> and you swing around and with your quarter staff, you're actually able to kick her and hit her with the, with the staff, um, as you were just spinning like a top. And let's nice. see the damage on that. Ooh, oh, wow. Oh, still awesome. So, nice. uh, so that's actually seven, because it's minus one. Well, uh, I'm going to add, actually add one for this rotating kick that you threw in as well. Hits her right in the jaw as uh, you see spit and blood fly out. That's what I'm going for. I want to hit her so hard that she falls back into this table with full confidence. Hopefully this works covered in flames, seeing the precarious position that you've put her in. But you're not able to to knock her over. And Delphine, she is looking right at you um, as she is just looking pissed off from from the attacks that you've done, um, knocking her on the ground. And she swings right at you, but it's the uneasiness as she knocked down to the ground she was knocked down and she had to get all the way back up and and run at you and she swings um and it it just barely grazes part of your shoulder as it cuts through a little strap of leather there um but otherwise it it misses you as you just lean back ever so slightly why won't you just stand still and cheek we're back with you uh you yes can you roll a wisdom saving check um, at this point, you hear the voices. And they go completely silent. I'm very unhappy. I'm not very happy. So I'm going to swing around and crack uh, Lady Durst in the head with my, my quarterstaff. My shillelagh no. quarterstaff. A good old shillelagh. And right on her bad shoulder, you hit her square. As... Um, you see nice. almost parts of the same wounds and injuring, injures, injuries start to, to reopen as um, as it seems that you've, you've hit her right in a weak spot. Oh, wait, and hasn't she entered my my combat zone? Yeah, so my, sorry, my I was going to ask that last time. Did, how long does that does that stand, keep stay for more than one charge? Or yeah, that... yeah, it stays as for as long as I guess I have them active. Is it for it like a... I... a a minute or I mean I don't know uh it's the uh halo of spores right yeah it doesn't say how long uh, let me put that up one more yeah it doesn't say <laughs> I'm gonna say um and we can look into this afterwards I'm gonna say normally it would be it would allow you to make one extra reaction that uses those sure. spores but for this time Roland shot this gust of wind right as you were activating your spores out, and some initial mm-hmm. ones just darted off in that attention. So you still have some um, that haven't reacted from what you've uh, already done. <coughs> so at this point, okay. she steps into that uh, that area, and mm. uh, tell me a little bit about how you kind of launch these spores at her. So because I'm spinning around, I'm you know whipping up a little bit of air when I spin, and so because of my my spores poofing out along with it when I hit her like it rough it's enough to ruffle my whole body that my spores also kind of shake out as well 
Yeah, and these and these small um, mushroom spores shoot out, and what looks like just again pollen floating in the air. It's quickly, some of these clusters <coughs> poof, 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 pop open um, as they as they hit her, and you can see almost little mushroom shards of sorts um, n- clustered around in her, in her face, part of her face and, and neck, as she takes three. Uh, poison or necrotic damage from, necrotic. from that. Ugh. Gross. Gross. And yes, and that will end my turn. Clement. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll say, let's just finish this. Uh, Delphine, use your app, uh, and yeah. I will go. Um, where she was on the table and just jump on her and try to grapple. Nice. Yeah, let's see it. Give me a strength check. You jump behind her as these spores just exploded in her face and her eyes are closed. And you wrap around with your large arms, giving her almost like this behind the back bear hug. And you hold her down and she screams, what are you doing? And you hold her back and she begins to break out um but her strength isn't enough delphini and roland each of That's you high. can roll with advantage now for the amazing opportunity oh. that clement just gave uh the rest of this group thank you clement i turn so, to roland I, and i go i'll go low you go high uh, let's do this let's go and i want a kneecapper <laughs> yeah let's see it so she's right now completely grabbed um, by Clement, and she starts to shake, shake wildly as she's trying to to break out. And Delphine, you walk in and strategically aiming right for her legs um, where you you won't make any contact with with Clement's arms, and you just boom with an echoing sound that, that vibrates through the room here. You just smash right into her legs. Both of her legs just break under the weight of this. And she um, slumps down in Clement's arms. She is looking so beat up and bloody at this point as as we turn to you, Roland. All right, so uh, with her downward trajectory, um, I, uh, I swing my quarterstaff up, uh, upward, just right towards her jaw. And as you do this, she looks and says, wait, 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 what if, what if we all be friends here? I, ooh, I've got some cool things in this room over here. Say that again. Do you reach out and you wrap your, her tongue around your arm? All right, woman, talk. And with my left hand, I just swing up and I just bludgeon her uh, along the side of the head. Uh, plus, plus me gripping her tongue like that. Uh, the tongue remains in my hand oh. as the rest of her remains just slump down to the floor. Clement, you you set this up. You knew this incredible attack was coming, and at this moment, you just art you gracefully let go as this body of Lady Durst crumbles to the ground. <laughs> And then we do the Final Fantasy win music. (laughs) Delphine, you head for this large foot locker that's right at the the foot of the bed. And you open that up. And what you find is there's a mess kit in there, which consists of a tin box with a cup and some cutlery. And and the other thing that's in there is this deep red lantern. It has some intricate rune words inscribed on it. But at this moment, Clement, returns to the room and this time with a guest clement you're, you're very cautiously bringing him into this room as as there's still these just disgusting bodies strewn about and yeah rose and thorn you guys walk walk in is is it over possibly we're not really sure uh seeing her her sneak that away i i take note of the fact that uh she has stolen away yet another something that we have come across uh somewhere in her black hole of bags that she has amongst uh amongst her and then um uh quickly without uh without uh, seeing or without allowing cheek to see uh what's in it i look in the bag that uh skull crusher had yeah and it just has one simple button 
on it that you're able to un undo. And, and all that's in this pretty small pouch is this, this tiny little leather journal. <laughs> and as you flip further through, uh, you start seeing this, this list of a schedule and and hearing the remembering the voice of Skull Crusher, you kind of think of this as like, oh, um, do my lumbar stretches, you know, do the do the thing behind the back to see if I can get that kink out of my the, the muscles there, and oh yes, oh two ten ten toe touches, and, and just the list goes on and on from all these kind of. I don't know how to react to that. Um. <laughs> try them, try the stretches. Um, excuse me. Is, Call some. Did, yes. Did. Do you see my brother here, or what happened? I don't, I, I don't think that whatever this is is lifted yet. I turn to Clement and I go, Clement, do you still have the note that we found with uh And I kind of motion off to the, the body that we have covered in the corner. Well, yeah, I do. Um... I mean, it was meant for them. Yeah, and I kind of uh, open the note and I show it to him. Like, your, your father left this. I think you should read it. And I hold it up so he can read it. And Thorne, he hands you this note. And and your sister Rose, given how she, young she is, she's actually still just learning how to read. Um, so you do, you do take this to yourself and, and give it a quick read through. And, and you do recount the story that the, that the party members had already had already heard of your father um, seeing that things were going wrong here and 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 seeing that his 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 wife someone that he loved so much so so dearly and built this family with together had just slowly succumbed to what he called madness and and at, as you get to the end of the letter you read that part again talking about how the the father saying that he wished he could have done more for for both of you and he wished he could have been the father that both of you deserve as that uh, although you're filled with sorrow from this that gives you a little spark of some reassurance thank you i'm i'm glad that at least at the very end my father tried to do the right thing my mother a different story uh, maybe maybe Walter still has a chance. Maybe my father tried, maybe others did too. I, I do feel that there is something further in. It, I, not sure what, but I can sense it. And I'll take uh, a sneak peek to the... Uh... Yeah, give me a perception check. Pat this body down as you get close to it with the sheet and and you, and you don't see anything here. She was dressed to these, these ragged clothes um, and and didn't even have any kind of pouches or other other items on her. I <clears throat> try and rest my hand on one on each of their shoulders, and I say, your father was a good man. He needed, uh, uh, he, he was wayward, but he wanted what was best for you. And we intend to carry on his legacy as we continue to search for Walter. We will do what we can to make your family as whole as we can. And uh, so, Please come with us as we as we search for uh, what we can of your family. There was a crate filled with torches, but as you're surveying the room, what catches your eye is this lantern. And you immediately recognize this as what is called a bullseye lantern. Uh, when this is lit, it burns for six hours and it casts a bright light. You see this and you're just like, no, we don't we don't even need torches. Excellent. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, 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 this is so cool. Like, why is Roland so interested in this? And cast Prestidigitation to light up the, the lantern. And it lights up and it just illuminates it completely as you see more of these earthen walls continue further into the depths of this dungeon. When was your brother Walter born? Um, well, I, I don't know how many years I've been dead now. Um, he was just a baby when we were alive. Maybe an Many adult. months. But uh, but Walter seems to be our last bastion of hope uh, in coming across, um, you know, any remaining family members. Uh, will you join us as we search for him? Happily. I'm not sure what we can do to help, but um, we'd be right by your side. Um, but you do wonder if you continue ahead, who <laughs> might show up? <laughs> and um, so Roland, Roland, yes? come yes? here, please. Um, yes, um, and I take Roland here. like far enough away. Uh, so Roland, I I think that maybe 
the baby was dead and the parents got into necromancy to bring the baby back and i think they you know chi i i was thinking the same thing myself but uh i i don't want to go uh worrying worrying the children at this point you you're walking forward to delphini in the lead with this bullseye lantern illuminating everything and you see uh, a room that has five stone crypts hewn from the earth in here and each crypt is sealed with a stone slab and you notice names carved into each one and just from a cursory glance you very quickly see one name for every member of the family and looking a little further you see that one of the slabs has been shattered barely visible behind scratches on a wall you make out the name robert durst and inside comes this ungodly stench i I tentatively move forward towards the broken crypt to kind of take a glance at what's inside um actually just getting even closer to it the the stench just fills your nostrils and it's so much that you almost start to gag and try to compose yourself delphini i need you to make a constitution saving throw Disgusting. Next. All right. Disgusting. <laughs> and, Disgusting. And what, Disgusting. What is that one? 14. Sturdy yourself. Um, here's what the crypts look like. Using all your might, you fight off the smell and you look inside and you see the, the cause of this stench. Um, whoever did this was clearly not a fan of Mr. Durst. You see decomposing <sighs> trash and even some animal and and what looks like maybe even some human remains in there. There's even um, like part of a a, a goat that's that's placed in there. And what catches your eye is there's a slight shine in one part uh, of of this crypt. Delphine Delphine holds back a gag and uh, Roland. And at this moment, as she looks at you, Roland, Oh, a smelly crypt. Oh, I love those. Oh, what if you reached in and wiggled your arm in there? Oh, oh, better yet, task one of your friends to do it. And then you hear this voice ushering, No, no, this is stupid. We need to keep moving on. I, I need, I need... Look, okay, Cheek, if you're so eager to uh, to see what's in there, um, just just go ahead. Just di- dive right in and... Ugh. Uh, good luck. The monkey climb up onto the the mausoleum and like look. Do I when I look into it? Do I see anything of value? Give me a perception check. What do I percept? A fifteen. You look in and you do see uh, the source of that shine and what it looks like is just two, maybe three copper pieces that's just kind of embedded in in some of the gunk that's down. <laughs> Roland, make her do it, yes. And the voices at this point just disappear, Roland, from your mind. As I as I kind of uh, walk up behind Cheek as she's like, uh, presumably like kind of kneeling at the edge of this. this yeah, I'm like perched on the... Gaze a little bit over. And then with my right shoulder, I just kind of give her a little bit of a nudge uh, to, to kind of try and knock her in. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, Cheek, I'd like you to make a, a strength <laughs> saving throw right now. 17. Yeah, you just, <laughs> this is so mean. Brush uh, one of Cheek's feet, that, feet that's on uh, on the, the crypt, and that just destabilizes you enough, Cheek, that you unfortunately fall into the crypt. It, it's just disgusting in here. Rolling. And, and I, I go, oh my god, Cheek, I'm so sorry. And, and I reach it. my hand in there. What? What? Please, what? Please help me out. It's. Uh, yes. I'm going to vomit in here. It's, uh, uh, it's disgusting. And Cheek, I need you to oh make my, a constitution God, so saving sorry. throw. You clench your nose and you're able to start scrambling out. At this okay, moment, cool. you hear this wind pick up through the room and it just seems to. <sighs> behind you, uh, a new figure has emerged. And you recognize her very quickly as Squiglet Dupont, 
the huh? nursemaid that you had encountered the last time, who had just mysteriously disappeared when you tried to interact with, with Walter's crib last time. And she's standing there in her ethereal form. Chill Thorn? Rose, I'm where I, I can't see you. You know you're not supposed to be down here. It's dangerous. We're, we're here to find Walter. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. And she runs over and like takes out a little handkerchief and like starts wiping his face and things like that to make sure he's all like buttoned up and neat and looks over at uh, Rose and does kind of the same thing and makes sure that her like bow is straight and things like that. Just very much taking care of these two children. Squiggles, you're back. Oh, yeah, I, I I am. I don't know exactly what happened, but um, I'm here. I don't, was looking for the children, and I they know they're not supposed to be down here, but sometimes they do get away from me. <laughs> We've heard rumors about, uh, was it Elizabeth, the mother? The lady of the house. The lady of the house, uh, Lady Durst. Uh, we heard rumors about her that uh, she seemed to be different than the rest. Uh, is, is there any animosity that had sprung up? When the mention of, of Elizabeth's name squiggles, you immediately start darting and looking around um, to make sure she's she's not there to, to hear this. Um, and, you, and you have this worried look in you. I, I shouldn't speak about the business between the, the master and the lady of the house. It was their private business and I was not always privy to it, but um, certainly people uh, talked in town. And uh, so, so I walk towards Squiggles, and I say, "Excuse me, Squiggles. Uh, I I appreciate everything that uh, that is going on here, and I appreciate you looking out for the kids. But right now, we need to know what happened." The lady was always very secretive of what she was doing here. I was only tasked with the cleaning and the te- the minding of this place. I know there had been some conflict between the the master and the lady of this house, but. Uh, the master was always kind to me, so I so I presume that it was something a falling out in their uh, marriage that drove such a wedge between them. And, Ooh, and, nineteen. And Roland, um, I felt like you were going. I felt like there's a little bit of a good cop, bad cop here. You, Roland. Yes, indeed. I, you can roll for persuasion here as well. See if you can get any other information out of her. Ooh, nice. Wow. So yeah. the two of Money. you, and and he just finished his spiel about you know like please we're here to help and and we're trying to we're trying to see what's going on here we sense this curse or there's something bad going on here and, and then cheek pushes Roland out of the way and just eyes you up you see all of this look at those dead bodies over there and look at those two ghost children it's your duty to help us find out what happened to them I. I, I I don't know why I'm here. I, this is my place of employment. I can't leave exactly yet. It's it's almost, I'm stuck. As you say death in that sentence, your eyes widen as, uh, as memories start to flood into your mind and you just start seeing almost like a, a smattering of flashbacks of doo, 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 doo. And, and you see um, you see the happy times that this family has had. You have another memory of being in the kitchen as you hear the father and the mother of this household bickering and yelling at each other as someone shouts so loud and slams on the table and you hear a door slam. The next one is you, um, you hear, um, you're in your, in the nursery room and you start hearing shouting and, and noises uh, uh almost like a ruckus of multiple people outside is the next thing you notice the door comes slamming open and people in there come and grab you up the next one appears and you hear lady durst sobbing talking about the death of her of her of her newborn blame being tossed on you and unfairly so you've you do, you've done so much for this family and the last memory that pops into your mind is that of your unfortunate death as your eyes almost seem to come back into the current room that you're in with with everyone here. Oh, I I think I remember the she hits Roland and says, "See, I see I scared her the her memories back. I did better her, than you." 
no, we, 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 we work together on this cheek. Uh, and, oh, and, uh, yeah. Together. We're, we're, we're a good, we're a good team. Together. Uh, learning that more and more. I'll let you have your opinions and I'll be right. So. <clears throat> Sorry, Squiggles, please continue. But there was an incident there. I was with the children and raiders, marauders, brigands. I don't know who they were, stormed the house and they took me away from the children. And I tried to stay with them for as long as I could because I know the lady and the master of the house would want their children looked after. But I was taken somewhere that I don't know. And I believe that is where you found me, stuffed inside that trunk. I'm looking at Thorn. Um... What, how, what is his reaction to all this? Um, this is the first time I've known that Walter died. I, I, I suspected, but I, I hope that somehow my father saved him. Squiggles, what do you know about these crypts? You must have been cleaning them when they were presumed empty, right? It's just something that the lady always asked. Asked that there be fresh flowers on all the crypts. They be kept clean for her and her husband. That's very creepy. Well, do you guys want to take a look inside? Uh, Squiggles, uh, wh what do you know about the bandits? Squiggles, you close your eyes and you think about that particular memory. And what you did remember is seeing faces of people you do not, you did not recognize, but all of them were cloaked in black robes. Is and... Roland still wearing the? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you now see these black robes that are oh too familiar. Next time, I think we'll have all our NPCs on roll 20 to roll. I just rolled for you. I was going to have a, a, just a base intelligence check as you're connecting these memories together. You just rolled a fat 20. So nice. at, at this Ooh. point, you, you are able to connect the dots. It has all come back to you. And you clearly see that the the people who did this to you were probably paid by Lady Durst or organized by them or or who knows. Uh, Squigs intentionally kind of reaches out to touch the children and like kind of grab uh, Thorn or Rose's hand to like be a little bit protective of these two children that she still believes are in her care and kind of steps in between them away from Cheek. Cheek, you went to look at Walter's crypt and it is... Um... And then as you push it a little bit further, you actually see a skeleton wearing torn black robes like the ones that Roland wears and in clutching in, in, a, in a decayed hand is a letter. Um, and the letter is written in blood. She made sure I couldn't stop it. Ironic to leave me here to die. I'm sorry, Walter. I tried. It seems that... Robert was mixed up in this, but he seems to have been an unwilling participant. And you see in Elizabeth's two things you notice. One, her crypt seems to be have kept up the best. As you peer into these crypts, the voices once again, <laughs> you must do something here, a prayer, a resting place for these bones. All right, and uh, so Cheek, if you would please lay Rose and Thorn in their respective crypts. And so you put each of the remains in their respective crypts. They slowly, they, be, they, they seem to be starting to fade away. I say, we lay bones to rest. Sleep thee now forevermore. This torment now ends. <laughs> Can we go up faster? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you yeah. guys! I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, it's always the yet an icon face. As that happens, there's these stone slabs above each of the crypts that have the the names of the people carved into them. A at this moment, as these these energies flow into the air, you just hear <laughs> as the name of Elizabeth Durst has cracked in two and it be parts of it begin to crumble and fall into the ground. You can't even read the name anymore. 
Um, so disgusted with the robe that I, I have on, uh, I, I take it off and I lay it over the, the, the goop and the viscera that is inside of Robert's, uh, Robert's grave. And, uh, I do what I, what I can to kind of throw it, uh, or like, uh, scrape along the walls and under to try and use it to scoop out as much of the grossness that is in there. Um, and, and try and pull it out like a, a large uh, trash bag or rucksack. Are we sure that this is Robert? Given given the, the final note in Walter's grave, perhaps that's actually Robert. Uh, someone give me a, a religion check or I'll accept a, a base intelligence check to, to think about. The best guess that comes to your mind with, with such a great roll of a 21 is you're not sure. You wonder if... Perhaps folks like the mother and the father of this household have too much blame, too much burden to bear here to get maybe the, the ceremonial uh, exit that the others did. With, I assume, Delphini in front with this, with your bullseye lantern shining brightly, you continue further. Um, and what you notice at this point is the, the tunnel seems to start turning at some odd angles. Uh, you see more and more of these alcoves that were carved out as if maybe going into different directions. And you come into a room that's festooned with moldy skeletons that hang from rusty shackles against the walls. And there's this wide alcove in the south wall that contains a stone statue carved like in the likeness of this gaunt, pale-faced man who's wearing this voluminous cloak. His, de his um, almost death-looking like left hand rests on the head of a crudely carved stone wolf, not nearly as ornate and decorated as, as the statue that, that is this person. And in his right hand, he holds this smoky gray, um, shimmering crystal orb. <laughs> The voices fill your mind again, Roland. Mm. And as you reel uh, in pain, one final voice slips into, yes, check for traps and then take it. And then gone. Roland, are you okay? I cast uh, Detect Magic to uh, to see if there is anything, uh, any sort of magical aura in this room surrounding the orb in particular. At that moment, it kind of clicks in and you see that this is, um, it seems to be a magical item. And from your detect magic, you can see that the, the wielder of this orb would be able to move earth itself. This seems to be the, the center of what this, this cult, this religion might be around. And, and I, I rush and I just throw my hand directly on the orb. Uh, trying to trying to right. pull it back. The min the second you touch this orb, a chill goes down your spine, and everyone around you, you feel this ever so slight shake in the ground beneath you. It pops right out very easily, and other than that, nothing happens. And no, uh, promise, I promise that I'll give it back to you once we get out of here. Cheek, this is not for you, and and with that, I I steal it away under my cloak. Um, Cheek, give me a side of hand. Roland, give me a perception check. And All Roland, right. could I get an Arcana check from you on the on that object? And Delphine and Clement, both of you had made your way towards these crates. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of them yeah. were already opened, and from what you saw, the you see this this thick black book laid on on the top of, of one of the higher crates, and other things that get your attention. Actually, um, there's quite a bit there is a bunch of black robes sticking out of one similar to the ones that that roland was wearing um next to that there's this folded brownish green cloak that delphini when you touch it uh you're surprised at how hefty and strong it appears to be as you as you lift it up four um red potions based on nice. the ones that you found earlier uh you would assume these to be potions of healing uh, I'll take one and hand up, hand one to each of us. Give me like. um, a roll of your choice here. I would accept an intelligence check here, um, an arcana check. To intelligence. Ooh! Ooh, that's one! Eh? That's, that's a fat 
Let's see some fat 20s in the chat. And while you're holding this this stick, you're, you're seeing more intricate carvings in, in the wood of it. You're seeing this delicate string that's attaching this, this frog carcass to the top of it. Um, and you would think from your interaction with similar things in the past, since you're, you were able to identify this, that it does hold a few charges. Um, you would even think that it could hold seven charges. I want to touch Roland with the the yeah, frog. You, you touch him now with the frog, and a little bit of like uh, like pus almost comes out of this frog on your shoulder, <laughs> and and once again, nothing happens. Delphini, I assume you take the lead once again with your As light usual. in hand, and. This tunnel continues onward. Parts of it get narrower or, or uh, shorter in height, as some of you even need to duck down as it brings back up to its its full size. And it, it turns once again at these odd angles. And soon it begins to slope down into this murky brown water, which leads right to your view, fully illuminated by Delphini's lantern, this large ancient wooden door there's this massive iron knocker and a large handle. The door appears to be unlocked. Roland, I think we have arrived at somewhere important. Oh, what if, what should we do? Should we knock? Oh, that would be so polite. No, no, smash the door down, you hear. As the voices once again begin to argue amongst themselves. Uh, so D DM, I do have a, a quick uh, question here. So Thunderwave, uh, it, it says it says that it can move unsecured objects. Uh, would that potentially be able to break down a door if I were to cast it close enough to the door? Yeah, so I would I would totally allow this. Uh, I look at Roland and I say, you, you thinking what I'm thinking? Let's do it, Batman. Uh, <laughs> 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 Breaching clear. Three, two, one. And... <laughs> and they let loose this energy and you just hear this massive boom as it just erupts this thunderous force forward and this door is just decimated from both of these blasts <laughs> shards of wood and the, the little bits of iron from that knocker just destroyed into a thousand, two thousand pieces, go fleeing into this room. Immediately you can see inside of this room um, this large stone altar in the middle of surrounded by water uh, and just very quickly uh, like just the glimpse of these stone balconies in the corner uh, with shadowy figures and there's a person wearing black robes and is just knocked back into the water the shards of, of wood, you see some of them puncture this person, and this person does not stand up. Whoever this was just fell right into the water and down. <laughs> and you hear uh, what you heard now uh, as this chanting, which was just a mumbling before, um, grows quiet. You, you step in a little further to get a better look, and you see dozens of these sh dark, shadowy figures in the balcony uh, areas up there. And all of them immediately from the um, incredible power and noise that you just created have all darted their attention towards you. And you hear echoing in this chamber an immediate chanting of Dalu Anore Vash Nore. Echoes multiple times through from their multiple voices and then these harsh stone walls in here bouncing around the rooms. And we're going to stop there no damn i can't wait for a long rest man <laughs> Great. My, Great. my my spell slots are waning <laughs> my too <laughs> uh, but thank you everyone who stayed with us this whole time um there's gonna be some incredibly exciting stuff coming up with some amazing polls um party the last thing that you see on this altar is this <laughs> smelly fish and it just seems to <laughs> emanate this stink out. Oh. Uh, and it's the last thing that you see and you smell as we cut to black here. <laughs> as always, a huge thanks to 
our our fantastic team here the, the the pcs who i hope you're getting to know and love our amazing npcs we have that new overlay to showcase their amazing contributions as always huge shout out to to all these people here um our fantastic writers have been working on some incredible story points for the the coming campaign we're technically still in an introductory <laughs> one shot um so this is really just a, a four shot but you know <laughs> yeah exactly one shot. Yeah. Uh, a one many shot and so we got some <laughs> awesome stuff up there um again shout out to folks like mighty maki who drew uh, lady durst in this one i thought she yeah. looked stunning and terrifying at the same time yeah um thank you to our awesome mods who who help monitor everything from running some of the uh some of the polls to doing uh some running some of the rewards and all of that and as always please everyone up here with a asterisk streams on twitch from time to time um i think nearly everyone else can be found um on twitter so watch the VOD, pull up this scene again, and check out some of the awesome people here.